Hello again and welcome back to our course on Excel 2016. In this section we're going to start to look in more detail at how to enter and edit data in Excel 2016 and then I'm going to set you your first actual exercise on the course. Now before I start I am once again going to be basically working with mouse and keyboard. I will refer to touch once or twice. If you are using a touch device you'll either need an on-screen keyboard so you'll get the equivalent of this or if you have an external keyboard for your touch device you need to have that set up because we're going to be entering quite a bit of text and numbers during this and subsequent sections. The other thing to bear in mind is that in this and the next few sections I'm really going to be concentrating on getting the numbers in and formatting them in the sense of making sure that dates look like dates and so on. The actual cosmetics, how pretty what we're doing looks, is something we're going to come back to later on in the course. Now the first thing that we're going to do is to start work on a new workbook and to make a new workbook you've already seen how to do that you can also use a keyboard shortcut the keyboard shortcut is control N so there is my new workbook and what we're going to put in this workbook is we're going to do a very simple monthly electricity account so the first thing I'm going to do is to save the book with the name monthly electricity there we are and now what I'm going to do is to enter the months of the year. Now you've already seen that we can actually use a series fill feature here. I'll come to that again in just a moment. The first thing I'm going to do is just select a cell. It doesn't really matter which one at this stage. I'm going to type in the first month of the year, which of course is January. Now when I finish typing January, if I press the Enter key, two things happen. First of all, I leave that cell, and that cell has its value January in it. But also notice that the selection, the cell selection, goes to the next cell below. And that lines me up well for typing in February. Now, if after you've typed, you press the Enter key, by default, the cell that's selected next is the cell below the one you've just typed in. But if instead of hitting the enter key, I'd used the enter, the tick mark on the formula bar, and if I use that now after typing February, watch what happens. February is entered, but I've now still got the same cell selected. So, although I've got the same content, my next selection is different depending on how I terminate entry of data into a cell. If I now want to go to K10, I can of course click in K10, enter March, and of course now I've got the same options, but also I can terminate entry in a cell by just clicking anywhere else on the sheet. So it's important to recognize that when you're entering data, what happens after you've entered that data depends on essentially what you do at the end of the data entry. Now the next thing I want to do is to use the feature that we saw before to get all of the months of the year in quickly without having to type them all. So I've selected January, I'm going to use the little symbol in the bottom right hand corner of the border there, drag down the requisite number of months, release, and I have all of the months of the year. Now notice that when we get down to September and November and December, they're actually slightly too wide to fit into the available space and they spill over apparently into the next column. Now in fact they're not in the next column at all and September for example is wholly within the K16 cell. But because we haven't told it otherwise what happens when something's too wide for the cell is that Excel lets it just display over the next one. Now, one way of getting around this is to make column K wider. And there are a couple of ways of doing this. One way of doing it is if you hover over the top of the column, over the K itself, you see that down pointing arrow. If I move to the right until it becomes a vertical bar 
with two arrows, one pointing out each side, and click with the mouse, I can actually drag to make that column wider, and I can drag it to pretty much any width that I like. As an alternative to that, let me just put it back, in fact I'll overdo it and make it really far too narrow. With that column selected, if I go up to the Home tab and the Cells group and the Format button, the bottom of that there is a drop down, and one of the options on there is Auto Fit Column Width. And if I select Auto Fit Column Width, then it will automatically choose a column width whereby everything in the selected column, column K in this case, fits comfortably within the column. Now in fact you can apply that command to more than one column at a time. So if I'd actually put data in columns K, L, M and N for example, I could select all four columns and use that auto fit feature and all four columns would have their widths adjusted to accommodate the data contained within them. What I've done now is to make a mistake in the spelling of September and having entered the data and got the column width sorted out I look at it and I think oh dear I've spelt September wrongly. To correct an error if you just click on set Metber in this case and started typing you would overwrite everything that's in that cell. Now if I don't want to overwrite it, I just want to correct the bit that's wrong. I've got a couple of options. One option is just to press the X button, the cancel button next to the formula bar and it goes back to what it said before so I can recover what was there before. The other thing I can always do remember is an undo. So there's always the undo option. Because if I press the undo button too many times, such as here, and undo that correction I made or the change I made to the column width, don't forget I've always got the redo button and that will redo the column width for me. But let's go back to having the September error, so I'm going to redo the September error now. If you want to just edit within a cell, there are a couple of options. I find the simplest way to do it is to select the cell and then click in the formula bar and do the correction actually in the formula bar. So I'm actually looking at the formula bar as I'm typing here. Some people prefer to just click and then click the cursor within the cell, so in this case the K16 cell, and basically look at the cell as they're typing. I find it easier to use the formula bar. By the way, if you don't like the formula bar, you can actually disable it. You might want to have a little exercise now, give you a little extra job to do it. See if you can find in Excel options where the option is to disable the formula bar. If you have trouble finding it, it's on the advanced tab in the display options. But if you want to get rid of it, perhaps to give yourself a bit more space, you can. I tend to use it, so I tend to keep it on screen pretty much all the time. So I've got my list of months. I'm just going to do a little save here, just save my work. Of course I've got auto save on anyway, but just to be extra safe. Now what I'm going to do against January is to put in the cost of electricity in January. So I'm going to type in 124, hit the enter key, and you can see 124 as the cost. Now. One of the most noticeable things is that when you enter text, such as January, by default it is left aligned. When you enter numbers, by default they are right aligned in the cells. So as I enter these costs, hitting the enter key each time, the numbers are right aligned. However, they don't look much like amounts of money. They just look like any regular numbers. And when you're entering numbers, there are many, many options for what the numbers actually mean. And one of the things we're going to do here is to actually indicate that these numbers are amounts of money. So let me go back and click on 124. And what I'm going to do on this occasion is to right click and I'm going to choose Format Cells from the contextual menu. 
the first page the first tab within that dialog is selected it's the number tab and you can see that by default it's taken 124 as a general format number note the little tip there general format cells have no specific number format but supposing I want to make it a currency amount let me click on currency now in this case because I've got myself set up to be using US currency I'll tell you more about that later on it gives me a sample of what the number will look like if I choose this setting note the sample there dollar symbol 124.00 it gives me an option to change the number of decimal places it also gives me an option to change the symbol that's being used from a US dollar symbol to just about any other symbol there is and it gives me a choice of showing negative amounts using either a minus symbol or red or a number in brackets the sort of accountancy type formats I'm going to stick with the defaults here click on OK and 124 is now displayed as $124 and 0 cents now if I now want to apply that same format to the other two numbers there I can select both of them I could perform exactly the same operation it's worth noting that I can access that format cells dialog from a variety of places another one is up on the ribbon on the format button the bottom part of it in the cells group on the home tab there is a format cells button link there opens the same dialog could do exactly the same thing again change the currency to the same settings I can in fact also apply it to the cells that I haven't yet put amounts into or indeed to the whole of column L if I selected column L click on again format format cells there's a difference this time because when I've selected column L I've selected a load of cells three of them are in currency format and the rest will still be in the same format they were in before which was that general format when you make a selection that covers different formats then when you bring up the format cells dialog Excel doesn't know which of those to show so it basically indicates that you have a multiple selection by not showing any specific format and what I would need to do now is to make all of the relevant selections so if I said currency and I say the symbol I want to use is the dollar symbol everything seems to be okay two decimal places click on OK now that format has been applied to all of those cells and if I click say in the amount for April and just type say 90 7.5 press the enter key then that is automatically formatted with that currency format that I've now applied to all of those cells so finally then I filled in the rest of the monthly electricity costs there I'm going to save that and that's the end of this section I'll see you in the next one to get the Excel 2016 course exercise and instructor demo file, click the link below in the video details. You can also scroll through the video details to find each section for this course, in addition to the playlist with the complete course for Microsoft Excel 2016. Finally, if you're enjoying this training, please leave us a thumbs up and some comments. Now, let's continue with our Microsoft Excel training. Hello again and welcome back to our course on Excel 2016. It's time for the first actual exercise on the course. This is exercise one. And what I'd like you to do is to create a workbook which shows the monthly averages for rainfall, maximum temperature and minimum temperature for where you live or work. Now the figures I've included in my version of this workbook are for the area where I live in North Yorkshire in England so we have a very temperate climate the rainfall doesn't vary very much over the year the maximum temperature is highest in July 20.8 degrees Celsius the lowest maximum temperature January December the highest 6 degrees Celsius 
and then the minimum temperature the lowest minimum temperatures we get around the new year so we get about 0.9 average in December January February so you need to get the figures for where you live make sure that all three of them are one decimal place figures so if you look at my rainfall for April if I just typed 50 in there I'd get 50 I want it you to make sure that it always gives you that one decimal place if you'd rather do the rainfall in inches or any other units for that matter that's fine if you'd rather do the maximum minimum temperature in degrees Celsius Fahrenheit absolute or any other temperature scale that you'd like to use that's up to you but in all three cases I'd like you to do these one decimal place don't worry about making anything look pretty we're going to be doing a lot of work on this particular exercise later on in the course my sample answer is in the usual place that's it for this section please join me in the next one welcome back to our course on Excel 2016 by now I hope you've completed exercise one okay in this section we're going to carry on looking at entering and editing data and in particular in this section I'm going to spend quite a bit of time looking at date formatting now dates are very often important in your worksheets and looking at the formatting of dates is actually a good way of finding out more at formatting data in Excel as well now in order to demonstrate this I'm going to start by creating another new workbook I'm going to put in this workbook details of some business expenses now for the moment I'm going to work near the middle of this worksheet it doesn't really matter where you work because you can always remove and add rows and columns later on a worksheet if you need to but I'm going to type in one of the cells let's say M9 here 3 stroke 9 now what does 3 stroke 9 mean well if you were Microsoft Excel you might take a good guess at it perhaps it means 3 ninths it's a fraction perhaps it's a part number a part code of some sort or perhaps it's a date depending on where you are in the world if it's a date it could be March the 9th or it could be the 3rd of September and when you're dealing with dates locale is very important but it's also important to understand that there are many different formats many different ways in which people show dates now in order to see what Excel makes of three stroke nine let's just click somewhere else let's click in N9 and it's taken it as the 9th of March but notice I had three stroke nine it thinks that's the month number and then the day number but it's actually taking it as the 9th of March so why has it done it that way round now in order to see why dates come out on your device in the way that they do we need to look at something in control panel so make sure that you can locate control panel on your Windows device and then we need to look at the region setting now I'm telling you this now because whatever I'm doing in this section on dates may look quite different to you on your machine because you may have different settings to me it doesn't really make any difference to how the whole thing works in terms of Excel but it will make a difference to what you see in the workbooks the worksheets that I'm showing you if you're trying to work along with me now the first thing is in this region dialog my location is United Kingdom but my formats are set to English United States formats so for dates and times the formats I'm using are these and how various dates and times look in these formats there are some examples of those in the lower part of this screen so for instance my short date format is month stroke day stroke year so when I typed in three stroke nine as an even shorter date Excel takes that as month stroke day and then when it displayed it back to me it displayed it back to me as nine hyphen March so it took the three as the month and the nine as the day now whatever happens on your device is going to be largely governed by your setting that you've got for the region on your device now if you're in the US you're probably going to use the same setting as me you'll probably have your location set to US as well somewhere else in the world including the UK and much of Europe you're probably going to want your short dates the other way around but be aware of what the settings are on the machine because generally speaking they're not set totally dependently in Excel
you can change the settings but by default Excel picks up its regional settings from your control panel settings. So let me now see what happens if I put in a longer version of a date in cell M10. This time I'm going to put in 31015. How do you think that's going to come out? Now what it's done first of all is it's recognized it as a date and because I didn't specify a century it assumes that it's the current century so it's put the year as 2015 but it's left it in that 3 stroke 10 stroke 2015 format because my date format is US date format that's month stroke day stroke year but notice that with those two the way the date appears is very different and it's important to understand what's happened there. Let's look at the first one again and this time I'm going to go into the format cells dialog and just have a look at what Excel 2016 made of that and what it made of it is actually quite surprising. There is in the categories here a category of date but it hasn't used the category of date it said this is a custom category. It's sort of a date because it's using D for day and MMM for month but it's not really strictly treating it as a date. It's treating it as if you like a string of characters that happens to be made up of two parts of a date, the day and the month. But notice it doesn't say month first then day, it says day and then month. And I could in fact here change that format manually to switch it round. But if I look at the second date, that has been interpreted as a date. And an example of the date is on the right there, the sample, that's the one I entered. There is the date category selected on the left and the type is the top one on the right. And apart from the format there which is basically month stroke day stroke year, there is also an asterisk and what that asterisk means is that this is a date which will change according to the regional date and time settings on the device where you're looking at this workbook. So if you're opening this workbook in say the UK or somewhere else in Europe or perhaps in Australia or New Zealand then it will interpret the date in the way that I intended so it will interpret it as March the 10th even though if you were looking at 3 stroke 10 stroke 2015 as a UK format you'd say that was the 3rd of October so if you want to use dates which will actually be interpreted according to the locale where the Excel workbook is open you need to make sure that you use one of these asterisk formats and that again is one of the reasons why I'm telling you this pretty early on in the course dates can cause people all sorts of problems but it's important to understand that you can set up dates which are if you like internationally safe and will be interpreted according to the format of the machine that they're opening. Now if you wanted to change this date format, supposing I wanted to change that M10 content to be this nice long date format here. Let's choose that one which is still a starred format. Click. Now you see you've got Tuesday March the 10th 2015 and that's absolutely fine because I intend it to be March the 10th and not the 3rd of October. In fact if I go back to the contents of M9 I could apply the same format there. Let's call format cells from the ribbon this time. Let's make it a date format. Let's choose that. Click on OK and that's fine. Note that it assumes that as the year wasn't specified it's meant to be this year 2015. Now earlier on I showed you how to format a whole range of cells so let's format column M to be date format using that same long version with the asterisk there. Now let's try typing some different things into the cells in column M. What about 11 stroke 4? See if you can work out what that's going to be. 
Well, it's going to be Wednesday, November the 4th, 2015. Now, what I want to do is to just go back and reduce the width of column M. Make a point about this. In some situations, if you have data to display, and this is particularly true for dates, and they just won't fit, you can get a string of hash symbols. Now, that doesn't mean to say that the value in the cell is invalid in some way, because in fact, if I clicked, say, in M9, if you look in the formula bar, you can see the contents of M9. Not in its full format, of course, in the short date format, but you know that there's valid content in the cell. But in order to see that valid content, you may have to, in this case, increase the width of that column. Now, as you saw before, one way of doing that is to do an auto fit column width and then everything will be fine. But you will often see that, particularly with formats like long dates. Now, another useful thing to observe there is that if you wanted to edit the date, Wednesday, November the 4th, 2015, and you wanted to change it from November the 4th to, say, September the 11th, you may be looking at that thinking, oh, my dear, what, what day of the week was September the 11th? And you're trying to work out what the day you should type first. Well, if you use the formula bar version here, then you can edit the date in its short format, even though it will be displayed in the long format. So if I wanted something like, say, September the 11th, I could put the day is 11, the month is 9, tick, and of course, it's a Friday. So again, a useful thing to know about working with dates. And one other important point to make here is that although you can apply all sorts of formats to all sorts of data that you are entering and editing, there are, of course, many situations in which you can't apply a format to something. So, for instance, if you take this text, train fare York to London, and I wanted to format that as a date, I really wouldn't get very far. So I click on date, click on OK, and of course it won't do it for me. If I had a number like 19,763, and I tried to format that as a date, It actually comes out as 2-8-1954. Now, you may think, now, in what way did that nice long number there come out as a date in 1954? Well, the reason is because dates are stored as the number of days since a date in the past. So don't necessarily assume that because something doesn't look as though, as in this case, it's a date, that it can't be interpreted as so by Excel. So that's really just a word of warning. But clearly, again, if I take Taxi to International Chemicals HQ and try to format that as, say, currency, that wouldn't work either. So you can't do everything, but sometimes you'll get taken by surprise with some of the formats that do appear to work in Excel. That's it for this section. I'll see you in the next one. Hello again, and welcome back to our course on Excel 2016. I'm starting this section with the business expenses workbook that I created in the previous section. And I'm going to look first of all at some of the other available formats in Excel 2016. Then I'm going to turn my attention back to entering and editing data and point out some other very important things about that. Now, given that this is supposed to be an expenses sheet, if I wanted to now start putting in the costs, Against the train fare York to London on Monday, March the 9th, I'm going to say that it was 127.50. So I'm going to put in 127.5. Now, look what's happened. Because I inadvertently had left a date format on that cell, I come up with that really strange old date. So what I will normally need to do is to make sure either before I enter data or after enter data that I've selected the right sort of format. Now if I put 127.5 in the next one, well actually it's a taxi fare, so let's not go too far, let's say 32.5. 
If I put that in that cell, bear in mind that I haven't formatted this cell as a date cell. It just stays as 32.5. 32.5, let's look at what format has been assigned by Excel. It actually has assigned the general format and it will very often assign the general format. Now there are many number formats that can be applied to a cell with a number in it. So for instance, I could assign a fraction format. Watch what happens if I apply the fraction format to that. I can choose the number of digits. I can choose whether I want it as say eighths or sixteenths or quarters. Supposing I wanted to do it as halves. Note the format isn't applied until I click on OK. And it becomes 32 and a half. Let's format it again. This time I'm going to try scientific format. Note that I can choose the number of decimal places. Let's stick with two decimal places. Click on OK. And it becomes 3.25 e plus 0, 01. That's 3.25 times 10 to the 1. Let's try another one. Now this time I'm going to apply a counting format. Notice that each time I change the category I have a different set of options on the right. So in the case of a counting format I can choose the number of decimal places and I can choose the symbol. If I were say a US based accountant I may generally work in US dollars but I may have clients around the world and for each client I would need to use the accounting symbols that are appropriate to that client. So I'm going to stick with the defaults here, decimal places to symbol dollar. Accounting format is actually very similar to currency format. The main visible difference is that the currency symbol appears on the left of the cell, but also the way that negative amounts are dealt with is a standard way. So click on OK and I've now got $32.50 with the dollar currency symbol on the left of the cell. Now could I apply that format to the figure above? Now bear in mind that I typed in a number there earlier on. It was converted to a date by Excel because the cell already had a date format applied to it. Let's try changing that now to accounting format. Now watch carefully what happens here because if I select accounting format all seems to be okay but the symbol says none and the reason is that when Excel applied accounting format it looked at that cell it saw that it already had a number in it although it was formatted as date and because there was no symbol no currency symbol it stuck with none so I need to be careful that I select my dollar symbol click on OK and now I have my format applied now I'd like to talk about a couple of the other formats now. Let's go back into the Format Cells dialog. Towards the bottom of the list of categories, you've already seen Custom Category, where you can actually make up your own formats. That's out of scope for the course, uh, certainly in these early stages. There are some custom formats already there, and of course you can use those, and it's pretty straightforward to create your own. But as I say, that's not something for this stage of the course. But I want to look at special because depending on your locale you may have some special formats. Now I'm not going to go through any of these in detail at the moment but it's worth being aware of them. And it's also worth being aware of the fact that although you can apply these formats to cells what actually happens in the case of each format will depend not only on the format itself but also on what's in the cell. So if I apply zip code format to the description of the expense, train fare York to London there, click on OK. Nothing really happens because as far as Excel is concerned that can't be a zip code so it just doesn't really do anything in this case. If I applied that same format to $127.50, don't forget I typed a number in there and applied zip code format to that, watch what happens. 
it does actually turn it into what it considers to be a reasonable go at that zip code. Of course, I typed in 127.5, so it's called it zip code 00128. So you have to be really careful about these formats in terms of what happens with many different types of cell content. I'm just going to undo that one. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the available special formats depend on locale. So let's just go back into Format Cells again and click on Special. I'm going to change my locale to, so let's go for French France. And I get a nice long list of available special formats there as well, corresponding to various French special formats. So that's Special. I want to talk about a couple of other very specific format options here now. I've typed 7.2 in cell 013. I can format that as text. Now if I format it as text, it's absolutely fine. 7.2 can be text. You'll notice there's something unusual about it because it's aligned on the left in the cell. But I won't be able to use that in the same way for calculations as I could say a currency figure of 3250. It is treated as text and of course text can contain numbers as text but it's a very important distinction that it is treated as text in this case. The other format that I could apply to that 7.2 again a very important one to be aware of is time format. If I click on that as time it comes up with the rather mysterious time of 448. Now you might think how did it turn that into 448? Well the answer to that question is going to sound a little bit implausible but believe me it is true. The way that Excel stores times is that it stores the time as a fraction of a day. So in this case when it sees something like 7.2 it takes the point 0.2 as the time. Now the point 0.2 is a fifth point 0.2 of a day. So it divides 24 hours by 5 and comes up with 4.8 hours. And that corresponds to a time of 4 hours and 48 minutes. So that's where 4.48 comes from. So because of this way that Excel stores times, 4.48 is a fifth of a day. And therefore it corresponds to a numeric value of 0.2 of a day. Now when you've got something in time format, you have a number of important options. So here for instance, you can choose the time format for the locale. Let's go back to English United States. And notice how it is on a 12 hour clock. So we have 1.30 p.m. Note the p.m. marker there. So let's click on OK. And what it comes up with, a fifth of a day, of course, that's in the morning. So it's 4 colon 48 colon 00 a.m. If I wanted to do it on the 24-hour clock, go back into Format Cells again. Let's choose the next format, which is 13.30. That's 24 hour clock format, that's 448. If I apply that format to a cell, and then I'm going to now type in that cell 2 p.m., what do you think will happen? I've formatted the cell as 24 hour clock, and I've typed 2 p.m. What do you think that's going to say when I tick it? That's right, 1400. Excel looks at 2 p.m. and it says, yep, that looks like a time to me. But the format applied to this cell is 24 hour clock format. So I'm actually going to display it as 14 colon 00. So Excel is pretty clever at that sort of thing. The next thing I want to talk about in this section is editing the contents of a cell. Now I've selected cell N9 and the contents of N9 are displayed in the formula bar. To edit those contents I can either go up to the formula bar and edit away in the usual way. I normally use the keyboard so I'd use the arrow keys to go left and right and the backspace key to delete what's to the left of the cursor, the delete key to delete what's to the right of the cursor. If you want to work within the cell 
and you may want to do this for example if you don't use the formula bar or haven't got it displayed at the moment if you just double click somewhere within the cell the cell basically comes to the forefront it looks as though the contents of 09 have been deleted there they haven't it's just the contents of cell N9 are now in front of those you can use the arrow keys to go left and right I can even go beyond the range of N9 I can go way off to the right I could delete the word London and change it to say Bristol and then when I finish I can either click elsewhere or I can use the tick mark next to the formula bar and my changes are saved if I'm using touch it's pretty much the same situation instead of a double click you do a double tap you may want to make the screen a bit bigger if you're going to do editing on a worksheet with as many columns and rows as this displayed so let me just stretch this out now let me double tap on cell N12 and you can see I've got a cursor off to the right there I can tap somewhere else do my editing using my on-screen keyboard or my external keyboard if I'm using one and other than that it works pretty much the same way that it works when you're editing with a touch device anyway and the next thing is pretty similar with touch or mouse and keyboard as well if I want to delete individual characters within the contents of a cell I first of all need to make sure that I've got a cursor there I can do this of course using either the formula bar or within the cell as I've got the cursor in cell N12 here and I'm using touch at the moment I'll demonstrate this with touch be the same with the keyboard press the delete key and it's the character to the right of the cursor that's deleted so press delete once that character's gone if I want to delete the character to the left I use the backspace key if on the other hand I select a cell let me select M10 using touch and all I've got is the cell selected note I haven't got a cursor within the cell I can tell the cells selected because I get a border when I'm using touch I get those two little circles as well if I now press either the delete key or the backspace key I will delete the whole contents of the cell so let me press the backspace key and the whole contents of that cell is deleted and that's it for this section I'll see you in the next one welcome back to our course on Excel 2016 it's time for exercise 2 now I have here exercise 2a.xlsx this is the starting point for this exercise and the content of this workbook is a list of opening hours for a public facility and they're the opening hours for 2015 I want you to update them to the opening hours for 2016 and there are a number of changes to make one of them is to change from using the 12 hour clock with AM PM to 24 hour clock for all of the opening hours so where it currently says 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. it should say 800 to 1700 and so on and I also want you to change the closing time on Saturday from 8 p.m. to 7 p.m. and then as an additional challenge what I'd like you to do is where it says opening hours 2015 along the top there change that to say opening hours 2016 now that opening hours sort of heading at the top there may look a little bit strange to you the cells at the top are merged and we'll talk about merging cells later on but in the meantime you only really have to think about cell A1 so that's it 24 hour clock closing an hour earlier on a Saturday and we're changing from 2015 to 2016 my answer to that is exercise 2b that's the end of this section I'll see you in the next one if you're not a subscriber just click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload to get the Excel 2016 course exercise and instructor demo file click right over there and click right over there to watch the complete seven-hour beginner course for Excel 2016.